Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dogs of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. looking man that left the boat when it docked at Selkirk and walked to a well-known boarding house in town. The landlady, a woman with a criminal past, was now posing as a respectable boarding house owner. As they went up the porch, Max, one of the men, spoke. This is Aunt Stella's place. <laughs> Looks mighty respectable, doesn't it, boy? Yeah, sure does, Max. Before we left Dawson after that robbery we pulled, I telegraphed her we were coming. She'll be expecting us. I'm awful sorry, gentlemen, but all the rooms are kept. Max, so you finally got here, huh? Come on in, bring your stubby face friend with you. Same old Aunt Stella. Come on in, boys. <laughs> yeah. Max, you're getting bigger and tougher every time I see you. Oh, this here's the parlor, so sit down, be comfortable. Uh, thanks, ma'am. My boarders all call me Miss Stella, so you might as well do the same. <laughs> you sure have more fool, Aunt Stella. <laughs> I suppose that's meant to be a compliment coming from you, Max. What's your name, young fella? His name's Bud, ma'am. Bud King. Never mind the last name. Probably changed it so many times you can't remember the right one. Max, how long are you aiming to stay here and what you're planning to do while you are here? Uh, Bart and I need cash, Aunt Stella. As soon as we get some, we'll head for Skagway. <laughs> Even the frozen north is getting too hot for you, huh, Max? I reckon being smart and avoiding the law doesn't run in the family. Oh, listen, Stella. Oh, never mind, never mind. I thought I was smart in those early days. But I ran into one hombre on the side of the law who was smarter. Since then, I've been mighty careful. Up here, the law thinks I'm just a nice, respectable old lady trying to make an honest living. Uh, you sure look the part, Miss Stella. Glad you think so. Well, come on, boys. I'll show you to your room, then we'll talk more over some coffee. Yeah, yeah good. The sooner we get something lined up, the better. Come on, boys. The following day was cold and windy, with an overcast sky indicating that the first snow flurries of the Yukon winter were soon to begin. One of Stella's boarders, who had come in at noon for dinner, stopped in the doorway of her parlor to speak to her. Is something wrong, Mr. Eaton? I want all my boarders to be pleased, you know. Oh, no, everything's fine, ma'am. It's just that I'll not be home to supper tonight. I thought I'd let you know. You see, there's an important shipment from the bank owned by Express on the Yukon Bell when the boat leaves at midnight. Oh, so that's it. But, dear, I don't see why you The shipment you can... will be delivered to our office when the bank closes. I'll keep it in the safe there until just before the boat sails, when the purser and a couple of guards will come after it. I'll stay at the office where the door is locked to guard it till I deliver it to them. Mm-hmm. I have an idea. I'll send some hot soup and biscuits down to the office for you this evening. Well, thanks. It's the same, Miss Stella. But once I put that shipment in the safe and lock the office doors, I don't open them up again till it's time to turn it over to the men who come for it. But if I send the food by Muko, my Indian handyman, he could call out to you when he gets there and then slip it in to you. <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't suspect a stupid fella like Muko to be a hold-up man. Now, would you, Mr. Eaton? Well, no, of course not. But, uh... and then it's settled. I'll tell Muko to knock twice on the door and to call out. Meantime, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police and his big husky Yukon King arrived in Selkirk on routine patrol duty. They stopped in front of the constable's office. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Go on, King. Oh, Sergeant Preston. I figured you and King were about due to come through here. Seems we hit it about right, Constable. I'd say we're in for a snow. I'll leave Blackie at the livery stable and continue my patrol with the dog team. 
Any excitement in Selkirk lately? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary, Sergeant. Oh, uh, I have my reports ready whenever you want to check them. Oh, good. I'll take Blackie over to the livery stable now. And I'll come back and get busy on those reports. See you in a little while. Right, come on. At the boarding house, Stella was having an earnest discussion with her nephew, Max, and his friend, Bart. Your chance has come sooner than we expected, boys. Oh, yeah? Tell us about it, Aunt Stella. And there's to be a bank shipment. Stella told Max and Bart of her conversation with the express agent and how he had finally agreed to let Muko, her Indian handyman, bring his supper to the express office. The two crooks listened intently, and then Max spoke. Hey, you're plenty smart, Aunt Stella. Where does Muko fit into this? What was on your mind? Listen, you and Bart follow Muko to the express office. I've got Muko all set for the part he'll play. Now, when the agent opens the door to take in the food, you and Bart get the drop on him and Muko. Tie and gag him, then get back here with the cash. You mean tie and gag Muko, too? Yeah, of course. You don't want him to get suspicious of me, do you? He knows enough to play dumb. Say, that sounds like a perfect setup. It is, if you both watch your step. Use bandanas as masks and pull your parka hoods down. Don't come directly here. Cover your trail first, understand? Stop at the cafe. But Miss Stella will be carrying the stuff we grabbed from the safe. Transfer it to the big dinner pail Muko will carry down to the office. Lots of men carry him into the cafe. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I reckon you got everything planned out perfect. I have. Only don't forget to come back here. I have a share coming from that bank cash. In the morning, we'll make arrangements for you to leave for Skagway. And I'll be down there at 7. And no slip up. You can count on us, Aunt Stella. Yep. <clears throat> we'll see you tonight for that bank cash, Miss Stella, so don't worry. That evening, shortly after 7 o'clock, the express agent, Mr. Eaton, heard a double knock at the locked front door of the office. Yeah, must be Muko with my supper. Use some food about now. Who's there? Me bring supper. It's Muko. Yeah, that's Muko, all right. Hi, Muko. Just hand it in, and I'll have to close and lock the door again. Uh, you take him and pay him. Yeah, thanks, Muko. <laughs> when I get home, I'll give get you... Get inside, boss. You've got quick about it. Look, you have got guns. Yeah, we both have guns. Get inside. Hey, what's your idea? Mask. Yeah, this is a hold-up, Savvy. Uh, keep quiet and do what you're told, or we'll fuck you. you you're not shooting, Muko. I'll bolt the door again. You, Indian, take your stuff to Rawhide. Tell that fellow's hands and feet. Me time. Yeah. Me time. Plenty of time. I had to in my gun to take this paper. We'll have plugged you right away, monsieur. Hurry up, Indian. When you get finished, one of us will tie you, too. Then we'll gag you both. Within a few minutes, Muko, acting frightened, tied the express agent's hands and feet. Then Bart bound Muko, and he and the agent were gagged. <laughs> Yeah, we'd better get the stuff in the safe and get out of here. Soon after the two crooks left the express office and covered their trail according to Stella's instructions, snow began to fall. Later, just before midnight, Sergeant Preston was in the constable's office going over reports with the constable when the purser from the Yukon Bell entered hurriedly. Constable, there's been a robbery. Wait. Oh, Sergeant Preston, I'm sure glad to see you. You spoke of a robbery, Tom. That's right. You see, I represent the express company aboard ship. I took two guards with me and went to get a shipment of cash from the express office just a short time ago. We found the agent and an Indian tied and gagged. What? The cash was gone from the safe. Say, that's serious. We'll go over and get the story from the agent, Constable. Come on, King. <laughs> a few minutes later, the two Maldives and King entered the express office. <laughs> Better clear these people out of here, Constable, so we can talk to the agent. Right. All right, men. Everybody out. All right. All right. Well, Eaton, what happened? Well, two men wearing bandanas with their parka hoods pulled down a shed of their eyes, pushed their way in. They tied and gagged the Indian and me, then robbed the safe. Happened about 7 o'clock. We've been tied up for several hours. We must have been the first to come here. Yeah, the office usually closed for business, and folks know that. You said something about an Indian. Where is he? Well, that was Muko from the boarding house. He brought my supper. The crooks pushed in when I unlocked the door to take the supper pail from him. Well, why do you leave before we got here? Poor fellow seems scared to death, Sergeant. As soon as it was untied, he beat it like a scared jackrabbit. I see. Well, we'll get all the facts we can from you, then we'll go to the boarding house and talk to Muko. Maybe he noticed something you might have missed. Yeah, we might have had a chance to pick up the crook's trail if the snow hadn't started, Sergeant. In spite of that, we might have had a chance if so many hadn't crowded in here before we arrived. <laughs>
continue our story in just a moment. Now to continue. At the boarding house, Max and Bart were in a closed room with the landlady, Stella. The cash, neatly bound with bands stamped with the bank's name, lay on a table. Stella was stacking the packets in three piles as she talked. Mm. Fifteen thousand dollars here, boys. More than you figured. Yes, that's five thousand each. Right. Max can tell you his old auntie is always fair in splitting the take. What does Muko expect for the part he played, Aunt Stella? Most likely still bound and gagged down the express office. Mm, we'll each give him fifty dollars. Muko will think that's a fortune. Yeah, that's all right with me. Wait till I put this cash in the table drawer. <laughs> Who is it? It's Muko, Miss Stella. Uh-huh. Muko's free at last. Let him in, Max. Yeah, right. Come on in, Muko. Uh, well, Muko, the boys tell me you acted your part well. What happened when you were finally found? Men from boat come, them untired. Me act plenty scared. Me leave quick. One fella go for constable. Sure, we expected that. But it's not good, Miss Stella. Hmm? What's not good? Me hide outside, wait and watch. Constable bring other money. Him big Sergeant what? Preston what? who have a dog. Preston? Holy mackerel, I've heard about him and that dog. I must admit I didn't figure on him being around. But if you followed my instructions about... Oh, we up, did, what... ma'am. Uh, what's more, the snow's been falling thick and fast for several hours. Nobody could think of a trail now, even if we left a clear one. Maybe so, Bart, but I've been around here for some time now. Preston will hear about Muko and come here to ask him questions, I'm sure of that. Muko, you better watch your step. Ah, oh, me plenty dumb. Me know nothing. Me take him supper, robbers come, tie up Muko and other fellow. <laughs> You'll do all right. Max, yes. you and Bart keep out of the way. Let me handle Preston. Now, I arranged for a dog team for you at the kennel. Yeah, thanks. I don't want to be here when Preston comes, Aunt Stella. I think Bart and I will get the dog team and head south tonight. Snow's heavy enough now. Mm-hmm. You'd be better off staying right here, but if that's what you want to do, go ahead. Here, I'll give you each your share right now. Thanks. Good. Thanks, ma'am. We'll get our stuff from our room and a few supplies and be on our way. After getting every possible detail from the express agent... Sergeant Preston and the constable left the express office and started on foot toward the boarding house. Yeah, we don't have much to go on, Sergeant. No, constable, we don't. Perhaps Muko might come up with some information, though. We know the crooks put the stolen cash into the dinner pail. Muko brought to the express office. Sure, that's no help. If we arrested everybody we saw carrying a dinner pail, we'd have the jail packed in no time. <laughs> that's true. Oh, that's Stella's place. It's rather late, but lights are still burning. Let's go in. Come on, King. I hope we don't get the sweet old lady out of bed, Sergeant. I think she's still up. Yes? What is it? The constable, Miss Stella. Oh. Sergeant Preston is with me. Oh, come right in out of the store. Oh. And she is with you. Bring him right in, too. Thanks. Come on, Jack. Oh, 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 oh. Come into my private parlor, gentlemen. Oh, thanks, ma'am. Do sit down. Thank you. Yeah. Good thing I was sitting up late checking my house account. Sorry to come here so late, but it's important. The express office was robbed tonight. A large amount of money was taken. Oh, how awful. I do hope you don't suspect that night, Mr. Eaton. Why, so far, Miss Stella, we suspect no one. Is Muko around? Muko? Why, yes. His room's just off the kitchen. Just a minute, Miss Stella. Huh? Didn't you send Mogo to the express office tonight with a dinner pail of food for Mr. Eaton? Well, yes, yes, that's right, Sergeant. Poor Mr. Eaton wouldn't have had a bite. You seem surprised when we mentioned the robbery. Didn't Mogo tell you about it when he came home? You mean Mogo knew about it? He was there when it happened and stayed there, bound and gagged until a short time ago. Really? I wonder why Mogo didn't come back and tell me about it. Didn't you wonder why he didn't come back after taking the food to Mr. Eaton? That was hours ago, you know. Well, no, I didn't wonder about that, Sergeant. You see, I, I told Mogo to take the evening off after he delivered the food. Oh. Poor Mogo must have been so frightened that he came home and went straight to his room. He has a key to the back door. We'll uh, talk to Mogo now, please. Of course, Sergeant. I'll go call him. Mogo! While 
Costello went down the hall calling Muko, King went to investigate an object he saw behind an easy chair. Hey, Sergeant. King's found something. Huh. Dinner fail. Here, King, carry this outside. Take it outside, boy. Go outside and wait. The intelligent dog lifted the pail and quickly went out into the hall with Preston behind him. The Mountie opened the door, let the husky out, then closed the door and returned to the parlor. A moment later, Stella came from the kitchen with Muko. Here's Muko. Where's your dog, Sergeant? I let King out. He was getting too warm, Miss Stella. Oh, yes, of course. Well, here's Muko. Redcoats come see Muko about robbery, maybe? Yes. Why didn't you wait at the express office for us? Oh, me plenty scared. Me get loose, run home quick. Huh? You came home and went straight to your room? Yes, he did, Sergeant. Uh, me go to room, stay there, lock door. What can you tell us about the robbery? Me not able to tell anything. Me plenty scared. Me get tied, gagged. Crooks big, wear bandanas, have guns. Them plenty mean. Me scared. Realizing it was no use questioning the Indian further, though he thought there was something fishy about the situation... Sergeant Preston dismissed Muko, saying... Never mind. Go back to your room, Muko. I'll talk to you again in the morning. I'll find out what I can from him, too, Sergeant. No, me go to room now. Did you mention the bank shipment to anyone, Miss Stella? The bank shipment? Do let's see. Mr. Eaton told you about it, remember? Oh, oh, yes. He did say something about why he had to stay locked up at the office, but I paid small mind to that. I was more concerned about him going without his supper. I see. Well, let's go, Constable. Good night, Miss Stella. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Now to continue. Carrying the dinner pail under his arm, Sergeant Preston with the constable and King walked back to the express office where the agent was still waiting in hopes of hearing news of the missing cash. Sergeant, I haven't asked up to now, but... I'd like to know why you brought that dinner pail from the boarding house. I have the feeling tonight that Stella's sweetness is covering up something. Her eyes followed every move we made, and she was quick to give Muko a cue for his answer. When I asked if he went straight to his room when he arrived home... I noticed that, but the dinner pail... Pails like this are common, I'll admit. But if this happens to be the one the crooks used, one of them may have held the handle long enough to leave a scent. A scent which King could use to pick up their trail. Here, King... Get the scent, fella. The intelligent dog sniffed the wooden handle of the pail for a moment. Max had held the handle in his sweaty hand while he filled it. And again at Stella's when he took the cash from it. King barked sharply to indicate he had found a scent. <coughs> now, if King can pick up that scent in here, it'll mean something. Come over here to the safe, boy. Find it, King. Find the scent. Yes, and that means this is the dinner pail the cash was in. But with snow covering the ground... We found this in Stella's parlor, Constable. We'll go directly to the boarding house now and start from there. Come on. As the two bodies approached the boarding house, Preston was saying... I'm trying to figure out what part Stella has in this, Constable. Maybe she's entirely innocent, Sergeant. It may be the pail was left there without her knowledge. We'll see. We'll have to move carefully. Get out of sight quick. Yep. Here beside the porch. Quiet, King. Dog seems heading this way. He's gone around to the back door. Two men. There might be just a couple of prospectors coming in. Yeah, let's find out. Here, King. <laughs> Pointing to the snow-covered ground where Max and Bart had just passed with the dog team, Preston spoke in a low tone. Find the scent, King. Constable, King's found the same scent as the one from the pail. Let's go around the house. Come on. Quiet, King. The dog sled had stopped at the back door. Max had gone inside. In the parlor, Stella was talking with the Indian Muko. Muko, I didn't like the way that Mountie pressed an acted. Oh, it's not good. Well, whatever you do, play dumb if they talk to you again. Well, well it's you, huh, Max. Took you long enough to get the dog team from the kennels. Muko will give you supplies. Oh, myself, Max. Hey, still. What? First time taking the rest of the bank cash, Stubby. Max, you going local? Put away that gun, do you hear? I reckon I inherited some of your smartness, Annie. What? At least I'm smart enough not to leave $5,000 behind that I can take without any trouble. What? Muko, move over there next to her. And both of you keep your hands up or I'll fuck you. Oh, you have hands up. 
Yeah, it's still there. Why, you two-timing yellow coyote, I'll show the mountain. No, you won't, Estelle. You still want to live here as a sweet old landlady. You wouldn't want them to know your past so that Mooka was a plant to get us in the express office. Not to mention the knifings and robberies he's done at your order. I'm taking your share. We'll take that cash. Your money. Oh, Sergeant, I, I'm so glad you came back. This man here is trying to... Act, Stella. We what? heard enough as we stood in the hall. We've tied up the man outside. You aren't going to take Hold me... Hold it. Oh, oh, my That's oh. your sweet old lady, oh. Constable. A criminal of the worst oh. kind, preying on those who trust and believe in her. As Preston spoke, oh. King, who had oh. moved into the room unnoticed, saw Stella staggering, oh. clutch at her bosom. Oh, my heart. Sergeant, she's going to oh. feed. I'll help her. Wait. Oh. The constable Save stepped quickly between you. Stella and Preston. Oh. It was King who saw the glitter of a small gun as she started to draw it from the folds of her dress. The great dog sprang with a growl, grabbing Stella's arm. Oh. At the same time, Preston saw Muko's hand move like lightning to his belt and grab a knife. Oh. Drop that knife. Oh. Don King, watch him, fella. Sergeant, I didn't realize... All right, you. King was on the job. I was sure she was faking. Uh, yeah, think you're smart. Perhaps, but you're not. We arrest all of you in the name of the Crown for the robbery of the express office. We found the rest of the cash hidden on the sled outside. Constable, you're going to be landlord to this landlady for a long time to come. This case is closed. <laughs> Radio dramas are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. So long. Mm-hmm.